Hello and welcome dear mathletes once again to Mathlete Mind. We continue our journey of CBSE class in mathematics and right now we are focusing on the topic of statistics. Now what exactly is statistics and why do we need to understand statistics? Statistics is that particular branch of us, maths which gives us the power of prediction. That means based on earlier data that is available to us, we can do future predictions in different aspects of for example, election results can be discussed or uh, analyzed. Then we have climate forecasting that can be done. We have stock market predictions. We have customer behavior. All this can be analyzed based on the present, uh, uh, based on the earlier data that is available. So based on this data, you can come to, uh, even if you can take uh, results, school results, examination results, sports arena results, everything, so many aspects of it. Okay? which are which where predictions are required and statistics uh, basically provides us with the tool for analyzing it. Now before we go into the details of the syllabus over here, let's take a very simple under, uh, example to understand uh, what are these tools and why do we need these tools and how do they enable us. Now this is a case of a misleading conclusion. There was a company and the company believed that increase its advertisement would lead to increase in sales. Their only consideration was increase in advertisement. So they went on pouring in money for advertisements. And of course, for a certain time of uh, the year, there was a uh, surge in increase uh, in the sales. And so they came to the conclusion that the sales was due to the increase in advertisement. But suddenly the sales dropped. And so they come uh, to the conclusion that the surge was um, like... Um, the sales has dropped, so there was no evident conclusion because their belief was only advertisement. So now uh, there was they came to a crossroads where there were two groups formed. One was the prosecution, which believed that the data was uh, has deceived the decision makers. It put the entire blame on the data that was available. And the second group said, no, it was the misinterpretation of the data that led to this uh, loss in the company. So then they uh, presented the case before the court and the judge appointed Detective Sigma to uncover the truth. Now Detective, Detective Sigma knew that numbers never lie, they are constant. But sometimes the interpretation of the numbers or the data is not done correctly and so misleading conclusions are drawn. So he uh, took the data and uh, he went to analyze the data based on different statistical concepts like correlation versus causation misleading averages, sampling bias, and small sample sizes. And then he presented his facts before the judge in the court. So he said that, okay, uh, the company believed that only an uh, increase in advertisement could lead to increase in sales. But this is not the reality. There could have been other aspects to it. Maybe that was a particular festival season, or maybe that was a particular time of the year where more and more people uh, purchased that particular item produced by the company. So one correlation may not uh, may not be the cause of a particular event happening. Secondly, he also said that if we take a skewed data, that means data which is not distributed evenly, in that case, if we simply find out the average or the mean, it can again uh, give us misleading conclusions. So in that case, we have to take the help of another tool that is median value to get the right conclusion. For example, if there is a class of students who are given a very easy test and the secure most of the students secure, uh, uh, say, the full marks, but some students secure, uh, say, very poor marks or even zero. If the average is taken out, then, of course, the total average of the class will decline to a considerable extent, and the conclusion derived would be the class is an average class, where, in fact, most of the students were above the average level. So this would lead to a misleading conclusion. Then if we take small sample sizes and then uh, uh, come to some, try to come to some conclusion, it will again be incorrect. Because for, supposing there is a city where the uh, interview of only the business owners or a high business people are taking place, then uh, if the conclusion is arrived, no, there, most of the people are rich over here and the city is very rich, it will be absolutely inconclusive because uh, there may be so many segments of society living in a particular city earning different incomes and so you have to take samples from different segments of the society to come to a particular conclusion. 
then uh, verification is very essential. Even if we have gone through all these different aspects, we have to verify the results before coming to decisions. So uh, the judge comes to the uh, final uh, result, uh, declares the result as human error caused the misinterpretation. It was not the data because the data is constant. It cannot lead to misinterpretation. Uh, it can lead to, if it is not analyzed properly, it can lead to misinterpretation. Uh, in this particular class, we will be talking about the mean, median, and mode um, of uh, discrete data. Here, mean, median, and mode are the three central tendencies. Now, in ungrouped data, we have already learned about ungrouped data and the calculation of these central tendencies for ungrouped data in class 9. We will just have a brief recap of what this ungrouped data is. Ungrouped data, you take the random arrangement of numbers, add the different observations, and divide by the total number of observations. If there are 10 observations, you divide by 10. First, add the value of the observations and divide by 10. So that will give the mean. So it will turn this complex data into a bit of simple data, give a very rough idea. Then we have mode where consistency states the show. This is especially supposing uh, there is a particular number which repeats often, then that is the mode value. This is especially um, good for people so they can come to conclusion that. Uh, this particular, uh, say, uh, item or this particular thing is more in sales now. Then we have the median, the uh, true center of the data. The median, what we do is, supposing the data is odd number of observation, that, uh, let's take it as 9. So 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 by 2 is 5. So the fifth observation will be the central value of this data. If the number of data is even, for example, 8, so in that case, 8 by 2 is 4, 4, and the fifth one, that is 4 plus 1, that is fifth observation. The mean of these two observations will give the central data, uh, central value of this, or the median value of this particular ungrouped data. We have also learned about histograms, pie charts, etc., bar by bar, the truth up, uh, is uh, unfolding. So all this you have done earlier, we won't be discussing all that. Now we move on to mean of discrete frequency distribution. Now here what happens is these are the values, the uh, discrete values like say these are the marks over here and these are the frequencies in the second column. That means supposing uh, five marks is there, so four children are securing five marks, six children are, sec uh, sorry, eight children are securing six marks, 14 are securing seven, 11 are securing eight, three are securing nine. So when we get data in this part, we call it discrete frequency data. So here we will find out product of each of these variable with the frequency, add them up together and divide by the total frequency. So if I find the product, I'll get here 20, I'll get here 48, and this is 98, this is 88, and this is 27. So if we add them up together, we get here 170, 190, and 210, 250, that is, uh, this is not complete, I have to add the, this uh, digit, uh, units place also, which is 24 plus 7, that is equal to 31, so this gives us 281, so sum of this data is coming to 281, first find the product, this is the summation sign, so add them up, so you get 281 by the sum of the frequencies, so this is 14, 28, 28 plus 8, that is 36, 40, so this comes as 40. So when we divide this by 40, we will get the mean of this data, that is x mean written in this manner. So this is basically 28.1 by 4, that is equal to 7.025. The mean of the data is 7.025. And you can observe over here, there are 14 children who are securing 7, so the mean lies somewhere around 7. Let's take the next example. In the next example, there is a slight difference. Here the mean is given, but one frequency is not available to us. So what we do over here is, we find out the product and proceed in the same way. This is 30, this is 51, 19 force that is equal to 76, and this is five, uh, 20, uh, sorry, 100p plus 5p square, plus 5p square, and this is 6, 3 is 18, uh, and 2 is 12, 138. So if we add, we'll get here 5p square plus 100p plus square, 
So we get here uh, for for for, uh, for two eight for twenty four. F one is twenty four. F two is twenty eight. Then we have another question here. Five coins were simultaneously tossed thousand times, and and on each the number of heads were observed. Number of tosses during which zero, one, two, three, four, and five heads were obtained are as shown in the table. Find the mean number of heads per toss. So here we have these coins. Five to uh, coins have been tossed simultaneously. So when uh, no uh, coin shows up per head, there are thirty-eight uh, tosses like that. And this summation is already given. That is thousand over here. So we'll find the product here as in the previous cases. We'll get here zero. This is one forty-four. This is four. This is eight and six. This is seven. Three is twenty-one. Carry over two. Eight three is twenty-four. Twenty-six two. And this is eight. This is four. Four sixteen. One six twenty-four. Five two. Six fifty-six and one. So if we add this up, one forty-four plus six eighty-four plus eight sixty-one plus six fifty-six. Plus one twenty five. We get here. This is eleven, twelve, and twenty. Carry over two. Twelve, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-seven. This becomes twenty-nine. Carry over two. So this is seven, eight, fifteen plus six is twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-four. Two four nine zero. So. This becomes uh, divided by thousand two four nine zero by thousand. That gives you two point four nine zero or two point four nine. Let us pick up the addition once again. This is eleven twelve. Let me carry over two. Seven. This is seven. This is thirteen. Twenty one. Twenty five. Twenty. Sorry, this will be seven. This will be seven over here. So this will will be two point four seven. Two point four seven. So the mean value is two point four seven. And this was some questions over here. With that, we come to this end of this particular video. Uh, discrete data. We we'll come to more of these videos where we calculate mean of group data in different methods. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the explanation.